Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. What happens when you include the love for hard rock and heavy metal with a huge dose of comedy? No, I'm not talking about Wayne's World. No, I'm not talking about Bill and Ted. I'm talking about Airheads, the 1994 film with Brendan Fraser in the lead role. This is a, a fun little film which I, I think the last time I watched this movie was back in 2012. I guess I don't remember 2011 2012 I guess it's a fun movie and yeah I decided to watch it once again and review it for this for the channel so Airheads is 1994 American comedy film uh, film sorry <laughs> directed by Michael Neiman um, starring Brendan Fraser in the the rock band is basically Brendan Fraser on vocals and guitar Steve Buscemi on uh, and to be honest he Steve Buscemi look, does look the part with the long hair uh, on bass and a young Adam Sandler before he started breakthrough, his breakthrough uh, as you know in movies as, uh, as the drummer. He also has Chris Farley, Ernie Hudson, Michael McKean, my man, Jud, uh, Judd Nelson, Michael Richards, uh, Kramer from Seinfeld, uh, Amy Locan and Joe Mantegna. You can't, I mean, because I mostly associate Joe Mantegna with the uh, Criminal Minds series and when he is much more older and, you know, uh, a well-respected, well-written, well-read um, and rich um, FBI agent and tutor, you can't see him as a, I mean, to see him as a rock DJ is surprising. And to be honest, I actually forgot that he was in this movie as well. Like I mentioned, I haven't seen this movie in over 10 years, uh, at least 10 years. Anybody else? Oh yeah, uh, Nina Simasco Cim as Susie, uh, as well, who later becomes the girlfriend of Adam Sandler's uh, character. So, Brendan Fraser plays Chester Chaz Darby, Steve Buscemi plays Rex, the bassist, and Adam Sandler plays Pitt. So basically, uh, they are a struggling rock band, who re a trio, who really want to make it in the business. And uh, uh, Chaz has basically had a fight with his girlfriend uh, because he keeps um, looking for record deals and getting his band's name out there. They're struggling. She's, she's the only one who's working and bringing in money. She kicks him out. He goes and stays with um, Rex and Pip, they decide that they want to try and um, force their way into a radio station. Previously, we see him, we see Chaz trying to speak to a record label executive. They kick him out because he's tried to do that many times. They go to this uh, station, they want to get their songs on the radio. And what happens is it ends up, even though the DJ Ian the Shark uh, starts talking with them the um, the label sorry the, the channel producer doesn't want station manager rather he doesn't want them he tries to keep them out um, he calls them Hollywood Boulevard trash and Rex and Chaz end up taking out these realistic looking um, pistols uh, basically like you know the one that goes those kind of they're actually water pistols where they've actually put in mix of water and Tabasco sauce but in a, in a fit of rage, and I think Rex pulls out his gun. They think it's actually real guns. So they hold the people hostage and they, you know, cops come there. It's hilarious what happens. Um, throughout the film, they basically just want the, you know, they want the demands to be met, which is basically a lot of silly stuff that young men at that time, me included, would have probably asked for and some food and drink. Uh, but they, you know, uh, ends up that except for the station manager, everybody else, played by Michael McKean, everybody else seems to be siding with these guys. Uh, they actually find it, um, they, they actually find it a little funny that they've been uh, held hostage by a rock band who just wants their song to be played on the radio. So um, the cops come, there's a huge crowd that comes in because they start to get to know this, it's on the news. Um, there's so much stuff that happens. The, uh, the, uh, 
the SWAT team basically was coming, they tried to take over the regular police's work, uh, Los Angeles PD's work, but uh, funniest enough, there's one member who the, the trio has not actually seen, who's hiding in, in the, uh, <laughs> who's hiding in the station, and that's the, the Kramer basically playing um, what Doug Beats, who's the accountant, and um, they're trying to get him as their inside man, kind of like a die-hard character. And they managed to slip an, uh, an actual gun to him as well. But they, nobody knows that they are not real guns. Um, in the end, uh, Pip and uh, the, the young lady, uh, hot-looking young lady, by the way, Susie, they end up hooking up together. And um, they end up calling... Um, Chaz's girlfriend uh, Kayla to come to the station because she's got the uh, the only other copy of the uh, of their demo because their uh, reel actually gets damaged in the station. So they come in and they end up finally when you know all things go away. There's a big fight um, and the the booth basically gets on fire. Their final demand is to have an actual record uh, person, um, sorry, a record guy come in, John Nelson comes in once again, he decides to sign them and he uh, arranges for uh, a, a big stage with huge speakers and a PA, all that stuff to be set up with guitars. Uh, Brendan Fraser's character Chaz wants this beautiful um, PRS guitar as well and they end up getting all that but it's supposed to be shooting a video and uh, they planning to have them lip sync. He ends up uh, destroying, uh, the three of them end up destroying everything. There's a huge fire, I mean not huge fire, but huge chaos happening around. Um, everything is funny. <laughs> they end up getting uh, six months in prison, but they will be released three months later. Their album is successful and they go on, um, they go on tour. So that is the end of the movie. Everything is fine with everybody because uh, that's how these kind of silly movies happen to and but it's a lot of fun uh, it's probably not one of either of these character either the main three actors best films especially not uh, for Brendan Fraser but I like these kind of goofy characters that he has played during his younger years uh, mixing comedy with especially mixing comedy with like rock music and stuff I love them this is one of the movies which I will definitely love for a long time I don't think I gave it anything more than a 7.5 out of 10 but it's a funny funny film silliness throughout um yeah 7.5 out of 10 i love this film uh watch it it'll make you laugh have a good night guys bye bye